Hey boys, it's Arm9. Today, we are going to be doing a PvP guide in GTA Online. So I've got 10 tricks and a bit of advice for you guys that are going to hopefully make you a better player in PvP. And if not make you better, make you less of a weirdo in PvP. Anyway guys, we are going to start off at tip number one. Alright guys, so the first tip that I have for you guys is going to be wearing clothing that helps to protect you when you're PvPing. Now, I can hear a few of you saying, but harm none, if you wear any sort of protective clothing that makes you a tryhard, and that's just not true. I wear protective clothing and I'm not a tryhard. It's literally what you do if you have brain cells. I can respect a guy who refuses to use it because I'm hard-headed like that and there's some things that I will never do like use the oppressor mark too no matter what. But for the love of god if you're going to be fighting people on foot and stuff you're going to need to protect yourself man. So what I would recommend doing is coming over to a hat section scrolling down and getting a combat helmet for yourself. So there's lots of combat helmets you can get. You can get all of these advanced ones. However, what I would recommend picking up is a quad lens or a dual lens combat helmet. Now, these are actually going to be very, very good and they're going to help you in a few ways. I'm going to show you guys what I mean. Now, other than that, there's not really any tactical clothing that you need to have. However, if you want to maybe try to camouflage yourself a bit, I'd say maybe wear some black clothing, maybe some beige clothing, something like that. Probably not something like what I'm wearing right now. It's going to make me stick out like a sore thumb. So if I'm PvPing, I'm not going to wear something like this. I'm going to wear something a little more tactical. Now, what I want to show you with the tactical quad lens helmet, if you didn't know, on keyboard, you press F11 to do this and you can put the visor down. Now, how you activate the quad lens helmet is you go into style, accessories, helmets, and when you're over the helmet that you have selected or that you have equipped, as you can see in the bottom right, if I press activate, it puts me into thermal vision. Now you can say this is try hard all you want, I don't really care. I personally don't even like to use this, but it is a feature that you have access to and it definitely makes things a little bit easier. Obviously it highlights anyone who's alive around you, which uh, it can help, it can definitely help. As you can see, I can see civilians driving in their cars all the way down the street. I can see myself glowing like crazy. Now this truly is pretty helpful for fighting actual players or even NPCs, especially if you're in a darkly lit area. This is a very underrated trick. Now, of course, to turn this off, you go back to style, you go back to accessories, back to helmets, and you can deactivate it. Now, I don't personally use that. Like I said, I use a heavy sniper with a thermal scope on it. Now, this is something that you can unlock in the bunker, and I prefer to do this because I really don't like using the thermal vision when I'm out my scope. I just feel like it's kind of annoying and I can't really see anything. It is an option there though, of course, if you don't have access to the thermal scope yet through your bunker research, you can of course just buy a tactical helmet with a quad lens or with a dual lens and you can use that to use thermal vision instead. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it for tip number one. You don't really need any of this tactical gear, I just kind of like it, but the tactical helmet is definitely something that I would look into. They're pretty worth it. Anyway, let's move on to tip number two. Now the second tip that I have for you guys is one that's probably not for many of you guys. Don't be one of these people. Don't be the guy who gets shot once by the police, throws a sticky bomb on the ground and blows himself up. It's cringe, it's the easy way out kids, they're not cool, and it doesn't even save you KD anymore, I have heard. So it's completely pointless, you're still gonna get killed, die like a man, get shot, like I don't know man, I'm just I'm just sick of it. Stop EWOing, you weirdos. Just please stop EWOing. If you guys EWO, please stop. I, I'm, I'm actually begging you, please stop. It's so cringe. It's just so cringe. Anyway, let's move on to you at tip number three. I know that one was pretty short, but hey, I think it needed to be said. All right, guys, the next tip that I have for you is to use cover. Now, I know this is a pretty genius strategy, but you'd be surprised the amount of times when I'm fighting somebody in GTA and they're standing in the middle of the street, wide open, just waiting for me to kill them. So what I mean by using cover, I mean, I, I don't really think I need to explain this very much, but if I stand behind this dumpster, the only thing that's peeking is my head, as you guys can see. Whereas if I stand right here and I'm fighting somebody who's standing over there, you, you can kind of see my whole body is exposed. But if I go behind the dumpster, see, a lot harder to hit. And if you combo this by strafing, which I also a little bit try hard, I don't know that I recommend it, but hey, if you, if you want to be really good at PvP, you got to strafe. So it's going to make you a lot harder to hit. You can even go into stealth mode if you want, or sneak mode to uh, get some 
get some more uh get some more coverage i guess uh, i guess that's what we'll call that as you can see though i can just peek this guy super fast miss a shot oh nailed him okay and then i'm back in cover i can peek again dude i didn't even think i was gonna hit that shot i'm sorry sort of these civilians but had to be done so yeah use cover um another tip that i have for you guys is don't be afraid to use height either like with this parking garage a lot of the time when you're fighting people they're gonna think that you're on the bottom floor of this thing but if you surprise them and you're actually up on the next floor or even the top floor they're not going to expect it because on the mini map it's not really going to show whether you're higher than them or whether you're not or at least most of the time that's what i find and even if it does tell the enemy that you're higher up than they are they're not going to know how much higher because there's nothing specific to tell you that you could be on this level or you could be on the roof it's still going to say you're just a little bit higher than them so anyway guys there you have it use cover get yourself a height advantage go on top of a building if you're going to snipe people you know think outside of the box don't just stand in the middle of the street that's all i'm saying anyway guys let's move on to number four all right guys the next tip that i have for you is to use smart weapons now what I mean by smart weapons is don't use the dumb weapons. For example, if you have a heavy sniper Mark II unlocked, always use that as your sniper. Don't be using the marksman rifle, don't be using this regular sniper rifle, it's not worth it, it's not going to help you. Use the heavy sniper Mark II, this thing will one shot any player in the torso so long as they do not have bull shark testosterone or body armor equipped. Another tip here, try to use the best assault rifle, like the Special Carbine Mark 1 is actually a great assault rifle. I honestly think that it's better than the Mark 2 because you can put a dual 100 round drum mag on that thing and it, it just shreds. It's like a mini LMG, so that's awesome. Another tip, I mean the grenade launcher has its it has its moments, but like it's not that great. Out of the heavy weapon slot, I would almost always use the RPG or the minigun. Now I do have an absolutely personal beef with the Widowmaker. This is like the dumbest weapon you can use. Now if you're a new player and I completely understand why you're using this, chances are nobody's probably told you what the Widowmaker does to you. But also, it is available to you from, well, literally level one. Like, you can buy this thing whenever as long as you have the money. However, the problem with the Widowmaker is, well, you might know, it's the tracer rounds, man. If you're fighting an aircraft and you're shooting these tracer rounds at them, guess what? They can see exactly where the tracer rounds are coming from, and they can put a missile right at your toes, or they can strafe you with like the Hydra Cannon, anything like that. The Widowmaker is absolutely awful to use, especially against aircraft, and especially at nighttime. If you're using the Widowmaker at nighttime, man, you're gonna get cooked. If, if the jet pilot that you're fighting against has a brain and like all his fingers, you're gonna get cooked. Like it's rare if you're gonna win with the Widowmaker. So please, if you don't have a Widowmaker, just wait until you get the minigun. Honestly, the minigun's not even that good and neither is the Widowmaker. Just save up for the minigun and just, just hang on till you're level 120 and get the minigun. It's so worth it. Now, another weapon that I recommend picking up is of course the assault shotgun. This is like the best close range weapon in the entire game. You can just eat people with this thing it is insane how good the assault shotgun is like these three guys they don't have a chance like that look like bro they're already gone like i know they're npcs but like for real like they're they're cooked already now the assault shotgun you can also use at pretty long range and you unlock it pretty early like this gun is actually a machine you gotta pick it up you gotta pick up an assault shotgun it's super worth it boys anyway that's pretty much it use weapons that like are effective guys and don't use the widowmaker ever under any circumstance please I, I beg of you anyway let's move on to tip number five okay guys the next tip that i have for you is when you're getting griefed by an aircraft get underneath something now i know this is not exactly a revolutionary concept but say there's a hydra after me if i just simply stand like the hydra's not gonna get me like there's a very low chance unless they like suicide themselves to get you but then they're on the ground with you so like you kind of won that in my opinion but if you guys just get underneath something like a hydra can't really do anything to you in here especially i mean i guess they could come into hover mode but that's like i said that's literally a suicide mission so you know if you can get into somewhere like here even dude nobody is going to get you with an aircraft in here and if you have a vehicle I have another solution for you guys, especially if like a Mark II oppressor is chasing you. So guys, some vehicles in GTA have a proximity mine dropper on them, like the Insurgent Pickup Custom. Now, if you have one of these and you're being chased by an oppressor Mark II, the Mark II will occasionally chase you underneath a roof like I'm under right now. 
If they do this, what you do is you place proximity mines. Now, they will be forced to fly relatively close to the ground because they don't want to hit their head on the rooftop and fall off their oppressor, but they also don't want to touch the ground, so they're going to fly somewhere in the middle. Luckily, the proximity mines have a pretty good range on them, so if they come anywhere near them, they're probably going to get blown up, and if they're anywhere near a vehicle who gets blown up, by the proximity mines, they're also gonna get it. Now I'm gonna show you guys what I mean by uh, the proximity mines have a really good range on them. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna place a proximity mine in the middle of this lane. And this car that's coming down the road right now, oh, uh oh, he's coming down that lane. Okay, I didn't mean for that, I didn't mean for that. Keep coming, keep coming, it's safe, I promise. Oh, dude, he, no, oh, gee. oh, man, oh, he just fried himself. Okay, well, my point is the proximity mines have a pretty good range on them. As you guys can see, when this phoenix drives forward, it's going to get hit by that proximity mine if someone else doesn't hit it first. Uh-oh. And as you guys can see, the phoenix got absolutely melted, and it was pretty far away, and the bus is on fire too now, so if there's an oppressor near either of those vehicles, it's going to get blown up pretty easily. So there you have it. You can kind of trap oppressors and any other aircraft that's willing to fly underneath object like that or a rooftop. So just, you know, keep that in mind if you have an insurgent pickup custom with a proxy dropper or a half track with a proxy dropper or any other vehicle like the APC or the Kanjali, you can make some pretty good traps like that for oppressor mark twos. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it. You get undercover if you're fighting an air vehicle and you don't want to get smoked. Like just go undercover, go into a tunnel. You're, you're going to be fine. That is it for number five. Let's move on to number six. Now guys, the next tip that I have for you has to do with when you're fighting somebody on foot. Now this could be a player that you've taken off of an oppressor mark II or out of a jet, something like that. It could just be a player that you've been fighting on the ground for a while now. And the tip that I have for you is don't always be the aggressor. Say there's a guy around this corner. Don't always be the guy to run around the corner and start shooting at everything. Chances are, if they're set up properly, they can kill you really, really easily. Like if I'm holding this angle and somebody comes flying right there, I'm just gonna hit them once and then I can peek around the corner and I can get the assault shotgun out. And when I get close, and when they're sprinting at me and they get close enough, I can peek the corner and I can absolutely shred them with this thing. So really this tip is don't always be the aggressor. You don't have to play aggressively all the time. You can be the one that waits for them to come to you. And more often than not, the player who's waiting patiently for the person to come for them is going to win a lot of the fights. It's a super, super important thing to learn. And a lot of people in GTA are super hot headed. So they're going to be the aggressor anyways. And if you're just defensive, you play the right angle you're probably going to beat them in the fight, I'd say a good 80% of the time. So just another little tip for you guys. I know this one might be a little bit obvious too, but hey, for some of you who maybe didn't know, play defensively, man. You're, you're better off that way. Anyway, let's move on to the next tip, number seven. Okay, guys, so the next tip that I have for you is to pay very close attention to your minimap. Now, the minimap is honestly one of the most underrated features in PvP in GTA Online. The minimap is so useful. Say you're standing right here and you can see the enemy player's blip is coming towards you and they're just around this corner. If you have really good minimap awareness, what you can do is get your RPG out and let's pretend that that group of civilians, oh, let's, okay, let's pretend that that group of civilians is the enemy and you know that they're behind that corner. Now you can't actually see their player, but you can see their person on the minimap and you can tell they're just around that corner and they're just to the left. So if I shoot this RPG, right there, chances are the explosion is going to kill them. Now, if you play this patiently, you can of course set up ambushes, you can set up RPGs like I just did right there, where they run around the corner, or they're just behind the corner and you hit them with the RPG. Super, super easy. Another thing that you can do is, well, I, I'll actually just roll the clip on this one, but there's no logic with GTA tryhards. Like, I'm just gonna put that right there and then I'm just gonna run away. <laughs> No way, no way. You can place a sticky bomb, and of course, wait for them to run around the corner. You could be hiding in a little corner like this. Obviously, I'm a little exposed, but if they peek the corner. So there's a couple little ways that you can use the minimap to just kind of figure your stuff out. And you can also really, really use it when you're sniping. Now, I will pay attention and I will draw a line from the front of my character's little arrow on the minimap, and I will use it to kind of predict where an enemy is coming from. And as soon as I see their minimap, 
icons start to shift over, I know that they're about to peak, and then three, two, one, and then I just blast them. It's super, super easy. Just pay attention to your minimap, guys, and don't be afraid to use the expanded radar either. It's super helpful. You can know what's going on in a much bigger radius than the regular minimap. So there you go, guys. Number seven, I know this is probably obvious too. Use your minimap. Like, it's super easy, and it's such a big help for real. Anyway, let's move on to number eight. All right, guys, now the next tip that I have for you has something to do with sniping. And the Heavy Sniper Mark II has been buffed recently in Grand Theft Auto Online with the contract DLC. The Heavy Sniper now deals a one hit to anywhere in the torso of a player, unless they have Bull Shark Testosterone or they have body armor. Now, the tip that I'm gonna give you guys here is don't always go for a headshot, especially if you have a Heavy Sniper Mark II. The body shot is such a bigger area and it's much more likely that you're gonna hit them in the body in comparison to the head. Obviously, the head is a pretty small target on this guy right now. I didn't mean that as that, okay. So if I go for the headshot, I might miss, but if I go for the body shot, there's almost no way I'm gonna miss that, right? Like, it's easy. Same with these guys right here. Always go for a body shot, especially if you have a heavy sniper mark II. Now, if you don't have a heavy sniper mark II, you might wanna risk going for the headshot, but the body shot is a bigger guarantee and you're still gonna do decent enough damage to get them down to being two shots. And if you don't have the Heavy Sniper Mark II, chances are you're going to be two-shotting them anyway, unless you hit a headshot. So you might as well go for the body shot. It's a larger chance that you're going to hit the shot. And of course, if you get two shots on a bigger target in rapid succession, rather than getting maybe one lucky shot on their head, you're probably going to get more kills a little bit easier that way. So I would always recommend going for a body shot, guys. It's way more worth it. Save yourself the effort and the energy of going for the headshot. I know the headshot is mad satisfying, but like, just go for the body shot, to be honest. Anyway, guys, that is it for tip number eight. Let's move on to tip number nine. All right, guys, the next tip that I have for you is to not always use vehicles or not always rely on vehicles. Say you are having a fight with another player in online, which is, I mean, chances are that's, you know, if you're going to PvP, you're probably fighting another player. With that out of the way, uh, say you're fighting somebody and say the fight starts off with them being on a Mark II Oppressor and you kill them off of it. Now, Mark II Oppressor users aren't usually very reasonable people. However, say you kill them off their Mark II, you blow up their Mark II. They don't have a Mark II anymore for at least a few minutes until they call Moore's Mutual. Go get it back. My recommendation is to not necessarily escalate the fight by bringing out, say, a Hydra or a Kanjali or something of that sort. If you bring out a vehicle, you never know. They might bring out a vehicle that's even better than the Mark II Oppressor. Not that there really are many that are better than the Mark II, but hey, they might bring out a Hydra to blow up your Kanjali. And in a Kanjali, you're not very well protected against the Hydra unless you've got a gunner. So basically my point is don't escalate a fight that doesn't need to be escalated. Obviously, if you kill them off of their Oppressor Mark II, you blow it up and then they go and get it right back, then you might want to escalate it. You might want to grab a Night Shark so you don't get farmed on the ground. If they grab a Hydra, you might want to go and, you know, get in something armored that you can protect yourself with or, you know, just do your best to shoot it down. However, if you're both on foot, don't be the guy necessarily to go and get in the OP vehicle to farm the other player because that's just going to make them do the exact same thing. Then you're both going to be in OP vehicles fighting each other. It's just an endless cycle. Now, I'm not saying don't use your PvP vehicles for sure. If you want to use them, go ahead. But my recommendation is just be aware that if you escalate something, they can escalate it back. With that being said, that's it for tip number nine. Let's move on to the final tip. All right, guys. So the next tip that I have for you is... It's something that happens to me quite often in GTA. I'll just be chilling, minding my own business. Some guy will come along and absolutely smoke me. And then when I go to fight them back, they run inside of a building like the casino or their nightclub or their apartment. So basically, they kill me like that guy. Then they run inside the casino and you don't really have the ability to retaliate. My recommendation is to not be this player unless you're doing it to a griefer. If you're doing it to a griefer, chances are they deserve it go right ahead. But if you're doing it to some player that you just randomly killed on the street, it's very, very frustrating. And I would just recommend not doing it. It's pretty scummy, man. Then, you know, they come back for you and then you pop out with an explosive sniper mark too. You know, you shoot their Hydra down or whatever, and then you run back inside the casino or whatever building you're near. I think it's just a pretty cringe way to play the game. I wish you'd just, you know, fight like a human being. But, you know, if you want to be, you know, weird, then go for it, I guess. I can't stop anybody. But just a recommendation I have to not, you know, play like a scumbag. You know, I would just kind of avoid, you know, the uh, building pop in, pop out 
you know, shoot a guy a couple times, jump back in. Like it's, uh, it's just a, it's a little cringe. That's all. Anyway, guys, there you have it. Those are 10 tips for PVPing in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now I know some of these are pretty obvious. Some of them may have not been so obvious. Some of them aren't necessarily even really tips. They're just recommendations for how to not play like a scumbag. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something throughout this whole video. I'm sure that you might have at least learned one thing. If not, then I apologize. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, a like is of course appreciated. If not, dislike, of course. Subscribe if you guys are new, and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.